Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode of CUDA Crash Course. Uh, this is going to be an episode or an episode dedicated to the basics of threads in uh, NVIDIA GPUs and it's going to be the first in the series on overall GPU uh, compute programming. And so I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch and let's get started. So in this video we're going to learn a couple things. We're going to see how GPU programming uh, and execution is different from CPUs. We're going to learn the different granularities of parallelism in GPUs, and then we're going to go through an example of vector addition in uh, CUDA. CUDA is the proprietary language for NVIDIA GPUs. Uh, it's an extension of C and C++. So let's start with a SIMT model. So the classical execution, so if we just think about writing a C, C++, or Python program for vector addition, we want to add two vectors together. Now. The way we normally do it is just do uh, successive additions. So we'd have, say, a for loop, and we'd add a0, b0, and store the result in c0. And we do that, in this case, four times. So we'd have four instructions uh, that each calculate one addition. Now, in the SIMT model, SIMT stands for single instruction, multiple threads. And so we actually get this naturally parallel vector addition. So a single instruction will say, I want to do a vector-based operation, so in this case, a vector addition of two arrays, and the output will also be an array. So it's a natural way of mapping you know, very parallel data uh, in this very clean way. And so this is the model for GPUs. Now, GPUs start out, like anything, as a thread. So that's the lowest granularity of execution, and so these are what execute instructions. But threads are actually composed into these things called warps. So warps actually, uh, remember this is SIMT, so warps actually execute instructions in lockstep, meaning that at any given moment, all of these threads may be executing the same instruction together. Now sometimes, depending on the way you size your problem, some of these could be masked off, meaning that they're not executing any instructions, but in general, they're all executing the same instruction at any given time. Now moving on, we have these things called thread blocks. So this is what we actually program in. So uh, all of these warps get collected into thread blocks. So you as the programmer say, I want 256 threads. That's all you need to say. It will automatically translate that into individual warps. And thread blocks get assigned to single shader cores. So these are the cores in the GPU. Uh, and these are three-dimensional, so you can have thread blocks in the x direction, in the y direction, and the z direction. So this just kind of helps with mapping a problem to the actual threads themselves. And the thread blocks themselves are composed into grids, and now your grid represents how your entire problem gets mapped to the uh, GPU. And so this is something that we assign to our launch parameters. So our launch parameters are our grid size, so how many thread blocks there are in, in each uh, dimension, so how many thread blocks in the x, y, and z dimension. And then also uh, the other launch parameter is our thread block size, so how many threads are within each thread block. So our baseline GPU architecture generally looks something like this. This is from a Pascal uh, GP100 uh, GPU. So we can see we've got this gigathread engine up here, uh, and then within each of these SMs, that's where we have our warp scheduler. So we said that the warp is the lowest schedulable entity. So up here, we schedule our thread blocks to each of these SMs. And then within the SMs themselves, uh, we have a warp scheduler that actually starts execution inside of each of these cores. And then within the cores themselves, we have things like texture caches and L1 caches. We have the shared memory, sometimes called a scratch pad memory. And, uh, and then we have, of course, all our ALUs, double precision units, load story units, and special functional units. Okay, so that's going to do it for the slides part of it. So let's actually go through some code. So here we are in Visual Studio, and we'll go ahead and run through the specific GPU parts of the code. Now, we'll start out by saying we're going to do vector addition. So we're going to add two vectors together every single element, the addition of every single element is completely independent. It doesn't depend on any other elements in those vectors, so it's a very parallel, uh, sometimes we call this an embarrassingly parallel task. So first we allocate uh, size for our vectors, 
then we have to allocate memory for our uh, device vector, so for the GPU. And this is because the GPU has its own physical memory, not connected to the CPU physical memory. So uh, when we do CUDA malloc, it's saying I need to allocate memory on the GPU. Now there is something called unified memory where we can have just you know one set of memory that gets migrated between the GPU and the CPU and, and vice versa, but we'll leave that to another example. So then we'll just initialize the matrix to some random values. This is a, a function that I've written up top. And then we actually need, remember it's different physical memory, so we need to copy our data from the CPU memory to the GPU memory. And we do this with CUDA mem copy. And this says inside of my device memory pointer, remember when we call CUDA malloc, within our device pointer right here, this DA, which is just an integer pointer, it fills an address to GPU memory. And it says, I need you to put what the, uh, the contents of HA of size bytes, so our host vector of size bytes, into GPU memory. And I say which direction the transfer is, whether it's from the CPU to the GPU or from the GPU to the CPU, or even from a GPU to another GPU. I specify this with this last parameter, which is CUDA mem copy host to device, saying go from the host, which is the CPU, to the device, which is the GPU. Now you may wonder, how do I get a thread block size or a grid size? So how, how do I get the number of threads I should put in each thread block and the number of grid, uh, my, the grid size for my problem? Now a lot of this comes, uh, comes back to tuning in tuning for your specific architecture. So we'll just do one that's uh, convenient and fairly simple to program. Uh, it's important to know that there are maximum numbers of threads per thread block and maximum grid sizes, uh, but those are things that are uh, you can easily look up uh, within uh, a white paper for your specific architecture. So in this case, we'll just say, I want 256 threads per thread block. It's generally good to do this a size of 32 because remember these have to translate to warps which are of size 32 so it should be a multiple of 32. Then we have our grid size and so in this case what we want is a single thread calculating each element of vector addition. Now to get that we'll divide the number of total elements divided by the number of threads uh, per thread block. So we're going to launch num blocks thread blocks each of size num threads. So if you were to multiply num threads times num blocks, we would get the number of elements. So basically we're, we're allocating as many threads as we have elements in this case. Now I said these things were three dimensional. In this case, if you just give it a single number, like an integer, it will treat that as only a one dimensional thing. So just in the X dimension, which is really what we want for something as simple as vector addition. Now we call vector addition or our kernel, uh, and we'll go over the kernel code in a little bit uh, with these this triple chevron kind of notation. So three less than signs, then our number of blocks or grid size, and our number of threads per block. Uh, there's two more parameters that we can leave as just default for now, so we don't need to specify them. We'll go to them in a later video, and then we pass like any function the parameters. So in this case. Our two, our three device memory pointers, and then the size of our vectors. So then, after this, we should assume that we've calculated vector addition. Uh, we've calculated, or the sum of vector A and vector B, and stored it in vector C. So we copy back vector C into our host allocated vector, and we do CUDA mem copy device to host this time. So from the device, the GPU to the host, the CPU. We do an error check just to make sure we did it correctly. And then we just print completed successfully. So let's actually look at the GPU code now. So we've gone through basically the entire setup, but what does actual GPU code look like? So GPU code, is, uh, we've got this global that comes before it that says that I'm a CUDA kernel. I'm going to be executed on the GPU. And here's our parameters that are just like any other parameters. Uh, so the first thing we have to do is get our as we said, we're having one thread per every single, uh, sorry, one thread per element that gets X or that gets uh, added. So uh, one thread does A0 plus B0 equals C0. Uh, thread two does uh, A1 plus B1 equals C1 and so on. So we need to figure out out of all of our threads, what is 
who am I? So this code will get executed for each thread. So all uh, two to the 16 threads that we're launching. And so we need to figure out who we are. So how we do this is by doing this block ID X times block dim dot X plus thread ID X. So this says, which block am I? So if I'm the zeroth block, I will be block ID dot X will be zero. And my block dimension dot X. So remember, this is going to be our, uh, our block size that we specified earlier, which was 256. And then which thread am I in that block? Remember, so all of these end with a dot X because like I said, uh, these are one dimensional because we only gave it an integer. So it assumes the Y and Z, uh, we have nothing in the Y and Z direction. So our block ID, which will, which will be which block out of our big line of blocks do we pick? Then from there, we look at, or we multiply that by the dimension of each one. So if I'm in the second block, and my size is 256 for each block. Well, then my first thread of the second block will be starting at 256. And then my offset within that block will be this thread ID. So thread ID will start at zero for every single thread within a block. And then our global number of blocks also starts at zero. So we just use this to calculate uh, which thread in the system we are. Then we do a quick boundary check just to make sure that we are uh, uh, that this is valid, right? So we're not accessing something out of bounds. Remember, we can have problems that maybe aren't uh, the vector isn't a multiple of 32, so it won't line up just prop, uh, perfectly. So we need to check this uh, just to make sure we're not, like I said, accessing out of bounds memory. And then we just do simple vector addition. So for this thread ID. We calculate A for this thread ID plus B for this thread ID equals C for this thread ID. Okay, so that'll go ahead and do it. We can go ahead and build this project. All right, looks like it completed successfully. And we can go ahead and run it. running and we completed successfully all right so we didn't throw an error remember so an error check over here I have an assert uh, just in case we don't get the correct answer so it looks like we did everything correctly so my name is Nick from coffee before arch we have a github page that will have all the code for this CUDA programming so if we go to github.com slash coffee before arch go to CUDA programming and we look down here. So here's where we're going to have all the links to all the videos and all the files that we use here. And in this case, I'm doing vector edition and the code for vector edition is online. So feel free to download that and you know, play around with it. See if you can get it working. If not, be sure to message me. I have all my uh, contact information on this readme as well. So like I said, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch and I hope you have a nice day.